Assalamu alaikum, this is the rest of topic 9. I put already a few hours ago an image for the start or the introduction of topic 9. I hope you find it good and beneficial for tomorrow's exam, inshallah. And this is the rest across uh, period 3. Here we talk about variation melting point and variation structure and electric conductivity. When we go from sodium to magnesium to aluminum, melting point increases gradually. This is because sodium has one valence electrons, magnesium two, aluminum three. The number of valence electrons increase, and this increases the electrostatic attraction forces between their metal positive ions and the metallic lattice, and this increases its, their melting point. Now, in silicon, we find a giant covalent structure with a very high melting point. Then we go to phosphorus silicon and uh, phosphorus sul uh, sulfur, chlorine, and argon where the structure becomes simple molecular for phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, and simple, uh, very simple in argon as it exists as single atoms. In this case, we find melting point so uh, decreasing so much. Now, in case of electric conductivity from sodium to aluminum, it increases gradually, and it's maximum in aluminum. Why is that? As we go from sodium to aluminum, valency electrons increase, the free uh, electrons in the metallic lattice also increase, and this increases electric conductivity. Silicon has a giant covalent structure and it doesn't conduct electricity so much, just to a little extent. So why? That's why we mention silicon or we say it is a semiconductor. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon are non-conductors. They don't have any freely moving electrons in their structure. Now let's go to chemical reactions of elements in period three. This is a very important part. And I hope that he brings some simple equations tomorrow in the exam, inshallah. Let's look at the reaction of sodium with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Ox sodium is a very reactive metal. It forms an oxide easily in air. This oxide dissolves easily in water, forming an alkaline solution of a pH value very alkaline, 12 to 14. Now, magnesium reacts with oxygen with a bright white flame. Don't forget that sodium burns in oxygen with a golden yellow flame, magnesium with a bright white flame, forming a layer of magnesium oxide or a white solid of magnesium oxide. The magnesium oxide dissolves slightly in water to form a weakly alkaline solution of a pH 10 to 11 only. And the oxides of sodium and magnesium are ionic oxides and they react only with acids as they have basic properties. They are basic oxides. Now let's proceed to alumina. Alumina forms an amphoteric oxide, aluminum oxide, which is insoluble in water, and it has ionic structure. Aluminum oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid and other acids to form salt plus water. And it can react with strong alkalis such as sodium hydroxide to form sodium aluminate and water. And this shows the amphoteric properties of aluminum oxide. It has the ability to react with both acids and alkalis because of its amphoteric. Amphoteric means it has both basic and acidic properties. Now for silicon, silicon forms an acidic oxide, silicon 4 oxide, and this oxide is insoluble. And this oxide has a giant structure of a high melting point. That's why we use silicon dioxide in making uh, 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 some materials that resist high temperature. Silicon dioxide reacts with the basic oxide of calcium during the extraction of iron in the blast furnace for forming calcium silicate. This reaction can be considered as an acid-base reaction. So the reaction of silicon dioxide with calcium oxide is considered as an acid-base reaction. Why is that? Silicon dioxide is acidic, calcium oxide is basic, and they form a salt called calcium silicate which is known as slag, as you remember from your O-level. Now, phosphorus forms an acidic oxide with oxygen it reacts to form P4O10, a form of phosphorus oxide. This oxide is, uh, uh, can be hydrolyzed in water to form an acidic solution of phosphoric acid of pH 4 to 5. Remember, it hydrolyzes in water. Hydrolysis means reaction with water to form a new product. It's not solubility. Solubility when you dissolve something without forming a new product. But here you react the substance with water to give a new product, which is phosphoric acid. So this is called the hydrolysis. Now, 
silicon sulfur sorry forms acidic oxides which dissolve in water to form a strongly acidic solution now here sulfur dioxide dissolves in water to give sulfurous acid sulfur trioxide dissolves in water to give sulfuric acid ph value of these oxides in water is 1 to 2 strongly acidic and these oxides have the ability to react with an alkali such as sodium hydroxide to give the sodium sulfite if the reactant is sulfur dioxide sodium sulfate if the reactant is sulfur trioxide gas yes. remember sulfur dioxide and trioxide have both have simple molecular structures let's look at the reactions of uh, period three elements with chlorine sodium forms an ionic chloride which has a pH equal to 7 in its water in its aqueous solution. Magnesium chloride is a solid that has an ionic structure with slightly acidic solution. When it dissolves in water, it forms a slightly acidic solution. Aluminum chloride is a covalent molecule that hydrolyzes in water to give a strongly acidic solution of pH 1 to 2. We'll see now the chemical reaction. Silicon tetrachloride is a simple molecular structure which, dissolve, which hydrolyzes in water to give an acidic solution of pH 1 to 2. PCL5 phosphorus pentachloride has a simple molecular structure which also hydrolyzes in water to give a strongly acidic solution of pH 1 to 2. Look at the equation if we want to represent the solubility of sodium chloride and magnesium chloride with the equations. They should be written in this way. Look, it entered as a solid. Aqueous means that water is present here, the aqueous medium, and it releases ions in aqueous medium. You see, there is no change. You enter the solid, you end up with the ions in the aqueous medium. No new product formed, so this is only solubility. They only dissolve in water, no reaction here. But once we put aluminum chloride in water, it is hydrolyzed in water to form aluminum hydroxide solid plus HCl. Strongly acidic solution of pH 1 to 2. Remember, aluminum hydroxide is insoluble in water and it has amphoteric properties like the oxide of aluminum. Silicon tetrachloride is a liquid which has a simple molecular tetrahedral structure of a bond angle equal 109 degrees. Silicon tetrachloride hydrolyzes in water to give silicon hydroxide insoluble solid and HCl, so the solution here is strongly acidic of pH also 1 to 2. Phosphorus with chlorine forms a phosphorus pentachloride, and phosphorus pentachloride hydrolyzes in water to give two acids, phosphoric and HCl, and the pH here is also strongly acidic, 1 to 2. These chemical equations are very important. Take my advice and practice them before you go to your exam tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you.